no one, and I mean no one, beats the Detroit Tigers 10 times in a row. No one. All today on Locked On Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition, a fantastic, beautiful edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on MLB for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Detroit Tigers will not lose ten straight games. They won't. And I know that this is like ridiculous, and the problems that they've had did not just magically go away overnight. But you can't tell me anything today. And I think you should feel the same way. Enjoy a win because they're hard. Winning is difficult. If the last eight years of Tigers baseball has taught you anything, it should be that winning is difficult. And so we're going to enjoy and, and, and relish and hug the wins for as long as we can. Because... The tomorrow it, it ain't guaranteed to be back in the win column, but tonight is, and that's a beautiful thing. The Detroit Tigers beat the Atlanta Braves in miraculous comeback fashion. The first comeback of its kind. I think it was the first. Let me find the exact stat. I'll do some digging. ESPN stats tweeted something where it was one of the first comebacks in uh, at home since the Rajai Davis home run and uh, just a really, really cool night. And I know, again, like this is not like the World Series and this team is is still in the same position it was and they still have all the same issues they had. But like, let's just enjoy a night, shall we? The Tigers won tonight despite trailing by three runs entering the ninth inning. Entering today, the Tigers had lost 247 straight home games while trailing by three runs entering the ninth. Their last, which came against the Athletics on June 4th, 2014, which I believe was the Rajai Davis Grand Slam. Just a a very, very cool and fun ninth inning. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows up till that point. We will break down the game here. Uh, The Tigers do a bullpen game in which they go Mason Englert, Garrett Hill, Tyler Alexander, and then Alex Lang in the 10th inning. Doesn't give up any runs, Manfred Runner included. Uh, so let's, let's start with the pitching then. We're already here. Why not? Mason Engler goes two and two thirds, three hits, one earned run, one walk, one strikeout. He he's just, he's not a starting pitcher at the major league level. Uh, and he didn't even go three innings. They weren't asking the world of him and he only gave up one run. This is going to be an overlying underlying, eh, both maybe this is going to be a theme, uh, throughout all of the analysis on, on these pitchers outside of Lang, is like, did we really expect a whole lot better than what they gave us? Like, I, I think, yes, like, it's, it's not, they're not pretty lines. And yes, they gave up five runs in the first, well, they gave up one in the eighth. They gave up four runs in the first six innings, five runs on the game. It wasn't some amazing performance. It wasn't a master class. They didn't slice and dice the Atlanta Braves offense, but like, they kept the Tigers in the ball game. And if you would have told me going into the game that we were going to go Inglert Hill Alexander and that the Tigers would have a chance to win at the end of the game, I'd leave a happy camper. Win or loss, the offense has been awful lately. I just assumed that it was the offense's fault. If you told me that those three pitchers would get, put you in a position to win the ball game, to tie the ball game, to make it close late, everyone would obviously take that. 
then that's what they did. So no, it wasn't miraculous performances. Mason Engler still has a, uh, an issue where he, he just has to find a major league fastball. Really? Um, he's got decent secondary stuff, but he gets hit very hard. He got hit really hard this entire outing, but he played to the park. He tried to, to, uh, line the balls up toward honestly, like this is going to sound weird, but like the middle of the plate or uh, on a righty, you know, aim, you're not aiming for the barrel obviously ever, but you want to put the ball in a place where you think they're going to hit it to center field. That's, that's how a lot of pitchers operate. The pitch to contact pitchers operate at Comerica park. And uh, yeah, like, and even the run that he gave up was really just situational hitting, right? There was a lead off double and then there was fly out, fly out. And, and and the run just scored. Like it wasn't like he got hit all over the yard or anything for a for a boatload of extra base hits and whatnot. Um, but he, yeah, he he got hit hard, but held the Atlanta Braves offense to one run. We'll gladly take it. He hands the baton off to Garrett Hill, who comes into the game. Garrett Hill has had a lot of command issues. Really, this entire calendar year, I was just going to say at the major league level, but that is kind of translated over to AAA as well. Uh, he has good enough movement on his heater to be successful in AAA, just about locating it well enough to make that a successful pitch at the major league level. And in this outing, he threw a boatload of sliders. And it's not a bad pitch. It's pretty effective. It's pretty spinny. Uh, he, he has the ability, when the command is even somewhat decent, to put together some decent innings. Uh, it's just that has, I mean, he's got an eight and a half ERA this season. Like, it, it, and obviously he got demoted, right? At, at the end of April, he got sent down. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's just one of those things. Like he had three walks in two and two thirds innings. He had three hits in the same amount of time, right? Like he had six base runners in less than three innings. Not fantastic, but tight ropes his way out of danger in a bases loaded situation. What he only gave up one run in that uh, only two earned runs, obviously. Like, I I don't I wasn't expecting that much more out of Garrett Hill. Like, uh, again, I, I two weren't runs, three runs total. I, is four runs in six innings a, a fantastic performance? No, but we, we sent out Mason Englert and Garrett Hill against the Atlanta Braves. I'll, I'll take it. Then Tyler Alexander... Goes out there, three and two-thirds, two hits, one earned run, no walks, and two strikeouts. Uh, just the home run against would be the only kind of blemish there. But um, look, it, it's it's a common saying, but like solo home runs aren't going to kill you, right? As long as there's nobody on base, those solo home runs won't get to you. And that's another thing that's been frustrating. This is a weird ADHD side tangent, but like that's another thing that's been frustrating about Matthew Boyd is like he'll give up a single or a walk before all of the home runs he gives up this year. So that's just like another thing where if, if you can just, as long as there's solo shots, the bases are still empty after they were empty before it's only one run against, eh, there are worse things. And that's what Tyler Alexander did. Um, yeah. And, and the, the thing that I love about Tyler Alexander, say what you will about him. I, it's been a roller coaster of a, uh, uh, of a season this year. Um, we, we kind of know what we have with him at this point. The dude's not going to walk people. And that I can always love and appreciate and rely, honestly, like like very much trust that Tyler Alexander, again, say what you will about him, he's, he's not going to walk people. And uh, he, uh, Lang only pitched one inning and faced, what, two batters. Um, but Tyler Alexander, in almost four innings of work, pitched comfortably more than anyone else on the team tonight. Uh, and yeah, didn't allow any walks. So very solid. His ERA is down to five two three. It's been going down a lot the last couple of weeks. So good for him. We he's he's a weapon that we're going to need. Uh, we're going to need innings from lefties out of the pen, uh, and and he can provide that when he's on his game. So yeah, like I I, I don't want to be a broken record here, but uh, like yeah, I, I that those three put you in a chance to win, and you got a win using those three pitchers. And a day when you desperately needed at least two of them to give you significant innings because you just used seven pitchers on Sunday. So no, not beautiful lines, but a tip of the cap and, and, a, and an absolute job well done and a big time thank you to all three of those dudes for, for going out there and just limiting the damage. They were never going to shut out the Atlanta Braves offense but they put the Tigers in a chance to win and the offense finally woke up late and did that. So tip of the cap to those three gentlemen. We'll talk about Lang a little bit later. Um, 
Let's talk about the offense, shall we? That's kind of the fun part of the game. It was very quiet. It wasn't even really quiet. We'll, we'll get to it in a second. We'll get to it. But first, I got to tell you all about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the best. It's the definition of clutch. We're going to talk about clutch later as well. Uh, but Game Time is, is clutch because you can forget planning months in advance for something, right? Like they have deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. They also have the Game Time Guarantee, which means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and the same row for less money, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. You can get images of your seat before you buy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're all set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone. So you never have to dig through your email, wallet, purse ever again. So snag tickets without the stress at game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off of your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. I appreciate y'all for tuning in on this Victory Tuesday. What a beautiful day. Uh, I appreciate the everydayers, the people that do tune in every day. Appreciate y'all greatly. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's keep talking about this 6-5 to five victory in the 10th inning over the Atlanta Braves. Um, so the offense, this was such a weird ball game. So the offense ends up, they, they get shut out through six, and you're like, all right, well, it's 4 nothing. We're absolutely losing this game. I don't think a, a soul on this planet thought, you know what, they have it tonight. They're going to go out there, and they're going to score five runs in the last three innings and bring home a win. And sure enough, they did. Uh, but that being said, they end the game with 15 hits. And three walks. They had 18 base runners tonight. 18. Now, what that means is they, they also went three for 16 with runners in scoring position. Okay? And they left 14 on base as a team. Those are not good numbers. Right? That's, that's very much same old, same old. But, but, the difference is, in May, this was a common sight. When we were winning games, this was a common theme. They were going out there. They were getting a ton of runners in scoring position and couldn't hit any of them home. They were le we, we complained about Lob. I had a whole episode that was just named Lob like 50 million times written out, right? This game went back to that, which is still frustrating at times, for sure. Not denying that. But in the month of June... We haven't even had runners in scoring position to have bad stats with RISP uh, against. We just haven't been getting anyone on base, period. The walk numbers plummeted in June. The, the, the hit numbers out the window. They've been shut out a billion times. Like, th this was... This was reminiscent of May. And, and yes, the offense was still in the bottom of the, the, the league through May, right? But at least they were winning some ball games. And they were in the position to win a few more. The bar is underground. <laughs> no one's asking for the world. Just a watchable product. And this, while again... I said at the beginning, I'll say it again. All their problems did not magically go away. I still feel the exact same way I felt yesterday when I was really upset. But at least this was, they uh, were attacking. They were consistently getting runners on base. They faced a fantastic pitcher in Charlie Morton. Uh, they faced a really solid bullpen. Right? Iglesias didn't have it tonight, but is a darn good reliever. Joe Jimenez. Solid reliever. We know that better than anybody. ERA like three and a half this season for the Braves. Not having a bad year for them either. 
And they went up and had great approaches, great execution. And while they still, again, those kind of went out the window at times with learning the scoring position, did enough to get the victory today. And uh, it's just nice to win one. I'm not going to be upset about the risk today. Again, you can't tell me anything right now. <laughs> I am I am just thrilled that they won a game. They're not going to lose 10 straight. Goodness gracious. Again, saying it out loud, the bar is just on the floor, but I, I don't even care. I'm just happy my favorite baseball team won a baseball game. Because <laughs> those are few and far between. As far as individual performances go, there's quite a few we got to go over. We're going to save uh, Andy Abanez and Spencer Torkelson for later. Um, Javi Baez gets a couple of hits and hits the ball pretty hard in this game. Still has a, a pair of strikeouts, one of just the most on-brand ridiculous strikeouts I've ever seen. Um, the thing with Javi is the, the report is out. It's been out for years. It's 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 very painfully obvious, right? Like I'm not saying that he just like oh we fixed everything. No, the the thing is, if you throw low and in to Javi, he will crush it. Like that's where most of his damage this year has been done. Not very much, but most of his damage that he has been able to do is when somebody's trying to say to throw a, a slider low and outside. They miss their spot. It's low and in instead, and he demolishes it. Trying to throw a fastball so high that it's at his eye level, up and inside, because he'll swing and miss at it still. Missed their spot by a lot. Let Hold on to the ball too long. It goes low and in. He crushes it. And that's just what happened in this game. Someone threw it in his sweet spot, threw a breaking ball low and in. Don't Had to have been a missed spot. There's no way you game plan and tried to do that because it's like the only spot you can pretty much – not throw to and have a result in, a, in an automatic whiff. But that's what happened. So would love a change in approach still. Okay, we're going to – Javi gets two hits. Good stuff. Uh, great. Fantastic. Matt Veerling, couple of hits. Matt Veerling back from the IL. Nick Solak sent down to AAA. There's the, the roster move. Um, uh, you know – Matt Veerling is never going to be like the greatest hitter in the world. He's never going to be an all-star caliber hitter, um, but he brings a lot of athleticism that this team desperately needs. We've talked about that a lot, but also if his OPS is in the high six hundreds or low seven hundreds, while that's still well below league average, that's not ironically one of the best OPSs on this baseball team at the moment. So you can look at it and be like, Oh, we're not getting like, too much back on the offensive side of the ball with with Veerling. He has a 667 OPS on the year and a 247 average after the two hits and a walk tonight. But that's again, not ironically, one of the better stat lines on this team at the moment. So good to have him back. And again, he can kind of wreak havoc in a lot of ways. Um, he is another person that you should not ever throw non-fastballs low and into. It's the only pitch he can turn on and hit to the pull side. He's laid on a lot of fastballs. We've talked about that a lot. But he got a hanging curveball low and inside and almost took it out of the park to the deepest part of the, the, the field. Um, but instead, it hits off the wall and he gets a double. Great to see him back out there. This team very much with Badu and Green going down needs all their outfielders, healthy outfielders they can get. Um, so having an outfield going forward of McKinstry, Veerling, and Carpenter, some combination of that, it seems like, uh, is is probably what we're going to see on a decent basis. So, um, yeah, good to have Matt Veerling back. Um, okay, let's get to some of the fun performances of the night. Kerry Carpenter, another hit. Has a hit in every game, I believe, since coming back from the IL. 821 OPS. Uh, he gets pinch hit for late, but he also faces a lefty at some point. I think he he's probably at a point where uh, it, it, it's tough because like he is clearly better against righties than lefties, but also he's clearly your best hitter on the team at the moment. So you kind of got to let him ride. But in this game, he, they kind of walked the line and did both. So maybe that's just more of what we're going to see. Let's get to some of the fun performances because there are some doozies in this ball game. All right, we'll do that right after this. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. 
I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all for tuning in after a Tigers victory, baby. Offensively, we're going to save Torque for even later. Who do we want to start with? Zach Short. You know what? Uh, I'm pretty close to saying it. Um, he goes two for five with two RBIs and a strikeout. I said, and I've reiterated a plenty of times this season, about how Zach Short is not going to surprise us. Zach Short is going to be what Zach Short is. He's going to hit for a low average. He's going to draw his walks, though, and he's going to run into an home a homer every once in a while. Zach Short deserves all the credit in the world for just slapping me in the face. And I, I, I still don't think that he's going to maintain a 284 average and an 800 OPS throughout the rest of the season. But I'll be darned if every single night when the lineup comes out, I'm not looking going, Zach Short should be in here tonight. Where is he hitting? He has done nothing but produce at a higher clip than is expected of him ever since getting called up. Uh, he has fantastic versatility where he can play a lot of different positions. Um, he has objectively been a great second baseman. Covers a lot of ground over there. Looks great. Has the ability to play the outfield. Not as solid of an outfielder as he is a second baseman, but gives you a lot of versatility and has been producing, uh, again, ever since he got called up. Like, yes, the OPS went from 1,000 to 795 where it's at right now, but like, it, it, it's not like it dipped well below that. Now it's working itself back up. So, uh, again, I think he probably finds his home still kind of lower over the course of a full 162-game season than what he's at right now. But um, uh, he deserves a ton, a ton, a ton of credit for the season that he has had so far. And he has been very, very valuable to this Tigers team. So hats off to uh, to Zach Short. Um, do we go Abanez or Torkelson? Uh, you know, if it wasn't for Torkelson's heroics in the ninth, I was going to call this episode the Andy Abanez game. Um, but Torque did what Torque did. So it's kind of hard to, to have it not be all about Spencer Torkelson, 1-1 one, one pick and all that. So let's start with Andy Abanez. He goes three for four. The strikeout in the bottom of the ninth was not good. But three for four with an RBI and a walk. And defensively, guns down a runner at the plate. Uh, close play. I know everybody, you know, that. I, I don't think controversial is maybe not the right word, but very, very close play. I think, and I, uh, oh, you're the host of Locked on Tigers. You're a Tigers fan. You're biased. I actually think there's no way there's enough evidence there to overturn it. I think that was just an unfortunate, unfortunate for the Braves, fortunate for the Tigers, where they were going to, uh, stick with the call on the field, whatever that was. I, I don't think there was enough. There was no. Ang there was only one angle. Every other angle they showed besides the one behind Rogers uh, was completely useless. You couldn't see anything. And the one that he did, like his hands hovering over home plate, and then he like goes down to tap it uh, instead of just like sliding across, you know, the dirt and sliding his hand across home plate. So I, I genuinely don't think there was enough to overturn it, and obviously they didn't. Um, so, yeah, fantastic game by Andy Abanez. Hits a home run, hits a double, um, and throws out a runner at the plate to keep the game tied going into the bottom of the 10th. A massive, massive, massive game. Uh, Andy Abanez raises his season numbers. It's funny. We were talking about, you know, like three days ago how Andy Abanez had like a 160 average and an OPS under 600. Well, after today... He has an average over 200 and OPS over 600. So I, I would imagine that uh, if, if he's not going anywhere, he's probably going to be in the lineup again, not saying that like he's turned a corner and he figured it out and oh my goodness, he's going to be a great hitter now. But this is a dude that we have seen has the ability to go on heaters. When he first got called up, he had an OPS of a thousand for like a week, right? He was crushing the ball. Then he went on a huge drought where he went like 0 for 40. And then maybe now we're here again. He's a free swinger. He's not going to draw too many walks. Um, he, 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 the way that his approach at the plate is just very hot streak oriented. Think like Jonathan Scope before it all was started going wrong, right? Like when Jonathan Scope in 2021 was one of the best hitters on the Tigers, it was 
one month of 900 OPS, one month of 600 OPS. And it just found its way to be like a league average hitter by the end of the season. That's kind of how I, I see Andy Ibanez. Maybe it's even more of an extreme, honestly, on either end. Uh, I, I, that's how I kind of view him at the plate. Um, I do want to talk Alex Lang a little bit before we get to Torgelson as well. Uh, Alex Lang, great, great outing. Only threw four pitches and they were all curveballs. But what were they? They were in the strike zone. I think his zone percentage was only 50%. I think two of the four were. But the two balls in play were in the zone. Your stuff is filthy, brother. Just put it in the zone, and most times, people aren't going to be able to do too much with it, even if they get a bat on it. And that's exactly what happened in this one. I mean, shallow fly ball, right, for Andy Ibanez, and then the other one was an out as well. Just uh, very, very effective because he just he wasn't screwing around out there. He wasn't trying to nibble. He wasn't trying to do too much. He wasn't trying to get swings and misses. He was just trying to throw the ball in the freaking strike zone. And look what happened. Back on the horse. Now let's get to the main event. Spencer Torkelson. Spencer Torkelson goes three for six with three RBIs. I, I I know that a lot of people have already said this. This isn't a new take. Certainly not by the time you're listening to this. I hope this is a turning point. I I that's that that's just such a such an awesome moment for him. All the scrutiny he's faced from from the fans, from the media, like myself, uh, just everything he does has just been under a spotlight. Everybody has an opinion on Spencer Torkelson. The last four days, the social media has been a minefield because everybody's just arguing about whether Torkelson's a bust or not, and and no one is is. Uh, well, not no, uh, the opposite of that. Everyone has an opinion on him. A everyone's trying to say, oh, well, this is why, this is why, this is why. Like, that, that's that got to be a lot of pressure, man. And, like, I'm not saying that's not what he signed up for. It totally is. He went 1-1. One, one. That, that comes with the territory for sure. But what a great feeling that must be for him. With all that he has gone through and all the struggles he's had at the major league level, to just come out on top for a change and and really just destroy a baseball. What did the, the Reds announcer say when Ellie De La Cruz homered? That baseball had a family. That was 440 feet. The thing was almost in the camera well. He absolutely annihilated that. I thought the seams were going to come undone. Just an absolute tank to left field. Brings the Tigers within one in the ninth. Great at bat all around. He was taking pitches. Uh, I mean, if, when he was facing Morton as well. I know he had the strikeout in this game. But he was seeing the curveball decently well, just in terms of whether it was in the strike zone or not. Only really offering at, at balls in the zone there early. And then just absolutely crushes a baseball. Then the Tigers have nobody out. Nobody on, obviously, but nobody out, down only one now in the ninth. And they obviously come back and tie it. Zach Short Heroics, we already talked about him. Heroics there to uh, to tie the ball game. And then he comes up again in extra innings, Torkelson does. And when that is, is smart hitting, and I know that that sounds a little weird because that ball was like at his chin as far as height goes. But I don't know why you're throwing anything up in the zone. The, the, there, <laughs> there was what? One out? He's just looking for a fly ball to win the ball game. And he already showed he has the ability to hit a ball 440 feet. He's got the power. He's got the exit velos. We argue about the exit velocities all freaking year. If they mean anything or not. You know he has the ability to, to, to hit long fly balls. And just threw it up in the zone. And he said, I know this is a ball. I know this is a ball way out of the strike zone. I don't care. It might be the best pitch I see, the best chance I have this at bat to hit a fly ball. And that's all I'm looking for. And he did it. Beautifully executed. And the Tigers won't win 10 straight. Won't lose 10 straight. Golly, they probably won't win 10 straight either. But they won't lose 10 straight. 
Awesome moment. Torgelson, OPS now up to 686. 686. He's now been hitting a lot of home runs lately. And that's really the biggest thing, I think, with Torgelson so far. And I know, again, like everybody has their opinion on, like the, everyone wants to throw on the B word and, and um, argue about whether he's a bust or not and, and, and whatever. And um, I know a lot of people give me heat because they they say that I'm still too patient with and, one, and, and whatnot. Um, but really, the, the, the only thing that hasn't, translated and the reason why the numbers are like don't look good on paper is because there's no extra base power he's hitting the ball hard which people don't care about if there's no results but he's hitting the ball hard he's walking at a really solid clip he's not striking out a ridiculous amount not any like an alarmingly high rate the batting average, sure, could be higher if you're a batting average person. Why not, I guess. But, like, I'm not a huge batting average guy. Like, really, if the slugging percentage was decent, I don't think people would be complaining nearly as enough, uh, nearly enough, nearly as much about the numbers. So that's been the biggest thing. So we're hoping that this can turn a corner. Give him some confidence, and and, and we'll see what happens. Gosh, I hope so. And again, like, we'll end on this. We'll talk about the team as a whole to, to end the show here. When Riley Green got hurt, we talked about what this team needed to do without him in order to maintain even a remotely competitive ball club. That was, what, what did we ask? Do you remember? Do you remember what we asked? I sound like a teacher. Um, we asked two people to step up. A, Kerry Carpenter to get healthy. That was one thing because that would have helped a lot. We asked Javi Baez to step up, which has yet to happen, and I'm not sure is going to happen. But that's a conversation for a different day. But also, if Spencer Torgelson could go on a heater, it's possible to still win some ball games here. And this game was obviously a prime example of that. It gets a lot of help from Zach Short. A lot of help from Andy Abanez. The team, again, had 15 hits and, what, 18 base runners. Like, it's not like it was just the Torgelson show. But when you can't hit with risp, what's our rule? When you can't hit with risp, I really do sound like a teacher today. Golly, my bad. <laughs> the one rule that we've had throughout the entire season, if you're not going to hit with risp, what do you need? Pop. The only thing that can trump bad Average run in scoring position is extra base and home run ability. And that's what brought the Tigers a win tonight. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On. Check out Locked On MLB. That's a good show. Good product over there. Um, thank you to all the everydayers that do tune in every day. I appreciate you all greatly. Tigers win. Can't tell me nothing, baby. We'll be back tomorrow recapping game two of the Brave series. Uh, the pitching matchup in that one, that's a 640 Eastern game. Reese Olsen against Spencer Strider. That's a, that's a tall, tall task. But do you believe in miracles? After tonight, I might. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.